Hello, this is my robot voice. What up internet, Corinne here, and today guest DIYer Becky Stern is gonna show us how to sew with electronics. We introduce you to the cutest Dalek that's ever existed and Princess Leia earmuffs. You're watching Threadhead. Hey, it's Becky Stern, the director of wearable electronics here at Adafruit, an electronics company here in downtown Manhattan. We're really happy to welcome Threadbanger so we can work on an electronics sewing project together. For this project today, we're going to use an Adafruit Gemma. It's a tiny microcontroller. We'll put a little program on it to control these light-up LEDs. We're also going to use a little rechargeable battery, a needle, and some stainless steel conductive thread to connect everything up, and these are some alligator clips for testing. You can get all of these supplies on the Adafruit site. It's a lot easier to construct the circuit if your fabric is tight in an embroidery hoop. So I'm just going to lay out a simple heart pattern, trace around each pixel to mark where they go so when you're sewing them on, you'll know what to do next. Thread your needle with a length of conductive thread. We're gonna start by connecting the data lines of the LED pixels. So I'm gonna start stitching with my steel thread right there. Once you've stitched around a couple times, it's time to tie a knot on the back. Since we're using stainless steel thread and it's very smooth and springy, we need some kind of adhesive to seal the knots or they might come undone. So every lady's best friend is clear nail polish. It will keep the knots securely tied so they don't unravel and short out our circuit. Without cutting the thread, we're gonna move on to connect it to the next pixel. So I'll stitch over to where the next pixel is on my drawing. I wanna make sure I'm connecting an outward pointing arrow to an inward pointing arrow so that the data flows in a continuous bus through all of the pixels. Once you've connected two pixels together, it's time to cut the thread, but I'm going to tie another knot first. So then you'll connect the rest of the data lines, daisy chaining the pixels together, and through the magic of time travel, we have one here already ready. Each pixel's data out is connected to the next pixel's data in so that the information gets chained along. So on the back, that means that each data connection is separate. So you tie a new knot for each one, seal it up with the nail polish, and once it's dry, snip off the tails so that they don't touch each other. When you get all the way around, don't connect to the very last one because that's where the Gemma will connect and tell all of the LEDs what color to be. But before we sew, Gemma has ground, power, and data, and so the data will go into the inward facing arrow right there. Um, power will go to the little plus, ground will go to the little minus, and then I have other power and ground clips over here just to go to the next pixel so that we can test them two at a time. So Gemma is the microcontroller we're going to use. It's a very small sewable microcontroller that we make here at Adafruit. And what it does is it holds a little program that we'll write in software called Arduino, which is all open source and you can read all about it online. And I'm gonna plug in this USB cable to load the program onto the Gemma. And also it'll provide power to our LEDs and we can see if the data connections we just sewed work. So we can tell Gemma is ready for a new program when the LED is flashing. And I'm just gonna hit upload in the software while it's flashing. And it'll tell me that it's uploading the code to the Gemma. And then it'll tell me it's done uploading to the Gemma. And then look, the LEDs are doing what I told them to do. And since we're only providing power to these two, they're the only ones that are gonna light up, but we know that that data connection is solid and it means we can move on to sewing the power and ground buses for our heart. So I'm gonna put the Gemma on the back so that the LEDs are the only thing showing, but um, depending on what your flavor is, you could sew it on wherever. I'm just gonna connect the ground pad that's labeled to all of the minus signs on the pixels. While you connect data in between each pixel, and that's a separate connection, the ground line is one connection that connects all of the grounds of all the pixels, and likewise, the power connection does the same thing. So all negatives get wired together and all positives get wired together and to uh, the ground the power pins on the Gemma. Now we're gonna move on to power. It's marked as V out on the Gemma or voltage out. And uh, in the same way, you just stitch around the V out pin. Once you sew around that a couple times, you connect it on the front side to all of the pads marked with a plus sign all the way around. And you can see that we have a finished one right here. And then finally, don't forget to connect the data marked with a D1 on Gemma, this pad, to the inward facing arrow on your very first pixel right here so that the Gemma can give 
data commands to all of the pixels in the chain. So the circuit works great. I pinned it onto my shirt. You can find detailed instructions for this and all the other projects we showed you today on the Adafruit Learning System. And please subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube for more wearables projects every Wednesday. Thanks, Threadfanger. And speaking of cute technology, our niece Linda Lee recently cosplayed as a Dalek at the recent Doctor Who convention here in LA. Check it out. Hey, it's me, Linda Lee, and we're here at Doctor One. If you like Doctor Who, this is the place to be. Let's go meet some fans and some stars of the show. the most romantic doctor? Well, I think I would say that uh, David Tennant, I spent a lot of time with him really and I think that that relationship was probably the most romantic of, of them all, you know? Hey, we're here with Max and he built this Dalek. So Max, what did you build this Dalek out of? It's mostly made out of like a ton of cardboard. This, uh, obviously I just used a toilet plunger and a egg beater for that because that's what they look like in the show if you look. You will bow to me! Bow! We're just so proud! Hello there, my scruffy looking nerf herders. Today, I have a DIY project for you guys and that is... Princess Leia hair bun earmuffs. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Tania the Pirate's been a long time Threadhead, and we heart her. Make sure to go watch the rest of this video and a bunch of other videos that she's posted on her channel, Tania the Pirate. And if there's a video you think we need to take a look at, email a link to threadbangermail at gmail.com, and it may just get featured. Also, we love to see pictures of your projects, so post them to our Facebook page. Link in the description. A big thanks to Becky Stern for being our guest DIYer this week. If you know of any crafters or Etsy sellers that you think we should feature on the show, leave them in a comment below. Till next time.